to In The Know. Brought to you by the Racing Post and Coral. And we have a jump season finale for you to get stuck into at Sandown on Saturday afternoon. Uh, ten minutes late, apologies for that. A few technical problems, but we'll uh, sort those uh, out and hopefully uh, rattle through uh, the, uh, the winners at Sandown on Saturday afternoon in double quick time. My name is Ross Briley. Good evening to you. The flat season is starting to uh, get into gear. Obviously, we've seen some uh, nice types at Sandown uh, on this, uh, this afternoon's car. We've had your Newburys and your new markets from last week, uh, but we've still got plenty of national hunt fun and games for you over the next seven days. Of course, punches down coming up next week, uh, but we'll be concentrating on Sandown tomorrow. Uh, we have uh, a, a very uh, interesting potential angle, of course, in the old Whitbread, uh, with Christian Williams maybe having the one-two again, as he did at uh, uh, and at Kempton. Uh, we've got a small but select field uh, for the select at Hurdle, uh, like a footballer scoring against his former team. It's going to be a muted celebration chase. Uh, Mr Fisher and St Calvados go head-to-head -head once again as well. Uh, in a, a little bit of a battle for who can come out on top once all the big guns have gone elsewhere. Uh, that's maybe not selling it as much as I should have done for the opener at uh, Sandown tomorrow, but that's been the national hunt season, hasn't it? Uh, with uh, plenty of talk about uh, uh, ripping up the... Uh, uh, the, the book for the, the jump season and starting all over again. Uh, but we do get to see potentially uh, some classy types from your Skelton, your Nichols and your Henderson Yards tomorrow, whetting the appetite for the Irish action over the next uh, the five days from next Tuesday. Uh, like I said, hopefully we get some winners. We did last week, very different to, uh, to what we were previewing last week, of course, all weather uh, finals day uh, at, uh, at Newcastle. And uh, admittedly, uh, most of the winners uh, on that card uh, came from our core representative, Simon Clare. We'll be hearing from him a little bit uh, later on. Uh, but I am joined uh, once again in the studio, uh, ready and raring to go uh, for uh, the flat season. But uh, with the, uh, the flag waving in the jumps, it's Robbie Wilders. Robbie, how right, are Ross. you? Yeah, I'm good, mate. Um, yeah, I've been, been at my parents' house the last week, so I feel quite refreshed um, visiting them for the Easter. Yeah. Cruised back in about half an hour ago and uh, happy to be back in London. But yeah, it's definitely a much better Saturday than last Saturday, I think. Yeah, it's um, again, it's that, it's that time of year, it's that transitional yeah. time of year, isn't it? You don't quite. It is. You're watching, um, you know, you're watching novice events from the back end at Newmarket to look for three-year-old handicappers, and then uh, you're going back and looking at uh, whether Mr. Fisher uh, yeah. can, can win at Sandown. It's yeah, a lot of old faces. Uh, yeah. Obviously, Punch Town next week as well. Still a hell of a lot of great ones to to play for. So yeah, there are indeed. It's pretty yeah. good. Yeah. What did you, uh, do you do? You like the Sandown finale, or have you already kind of switched uh, up at this point? I don't know. I don't normally, but I got quite into it actually. I think there's quite a few decent bets there. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I'll say I'm into it this year. Okay, good. Well, that is uh, that is good news. Uh, Robbie, ready, ready to go for Sandown. Like I said, this is live and interactive again. So uh, get your thoughts and feelings set for the Sandown card tomorrow. Uh, Tom Siegel, uh, a, a man who uh, never has a day off, whether it's jumps or flat. And I'm sure you'll have been uh, making notes on potential classic contenders today and uh, potential Grade One chasers tomorrow, Tom. Absolutely right, Ross. Yeah, lots of watching uh, flat horses today and studying jump horses uh, while I was doing it. So yeah, I, I don't never quite understand these people who say I'm I haven't switched to the flat mode yet or I'm still in jumps mode. And because it, well, I think you can do both, can't you? you just watch, you just watch the good races and uh, and and switch on as necessary. So yeah, I love it all. I cannot wait for tomorrow. Really good card. A little bit disappointing in numbers in some of the races, obviously, but a good a good major handicap and a good handicap start the, start the meeting so hopefully a couple of good bets okay and how do you approach this uh, this send down card tom are you looking at uh, horses who've kind of ignored the uh, uh, the best of the uh, the winter or are, you, are you treating it almost you know because it's good ground the sun is out it, the the form is already starting to um to uh, to change towards those late spring summer jumpers yeah no no real difference to any other race i'm looking for a, i'm looking for improvers in every race i'm looking for horses that haven't yet shown what they're capable of i think that's how you get an edge in front of the market so that'll be the same whether it's the first whether it's sandham whether it's cheltenham whether it's aintree wherever it is and uh, that'll be no different i might obviously bump into one that's had enough for the season but that's the risk you take when you take that approach so same as everything look for a horse that's out of the handicap as simple as okay lovely stuff well hopefully we can find a few of those uh, simon clare has uh, been uh... Uh, gearing up for tomorrow's car by uh, eating as many biscuits as he possibly can <laughs> to uh, to celebrate uh, a few winners at, uh, at Newcastle last week. Um, how was your uh, how was your day out in the northeast, Simon? Yeah, after after doing this show on jump racing all season, finally the all weather comes around and I tipped a few winners. Like who knew? I'm an all weather expert. 
But uh, yeah, it was that, was it Boutremont, the French horse I managed to find? And none of the Cotswolds was the best one. That's the one that um, I napped because I know Dan Greer and Chris Kiley, two of the owners with Willie Twiston Davies. It was great fun being up there and being with them because Sam Twiston Davies was up with Nigel as well. And uh, that was probably the best scenes uh, of the day when they celebrated the winner. And um, Sam was worried about riding at Haydock the next day because he was all up for the celebration. So I'm sure he was very moderate at But uh, that was great fun. Great fun. But uh, I was good today watching the Sandow card. There was that Mostadaf. Was it Mostadaf, which Jim Crowley rode to victory in the three-runner uh, Gordon Richard Stakes. Uh, hopefully that might go for the Brigadier Gerald, which Coral is sponsoring this year, which is at May the 26th, an evening meeting at Sandown. So uh, anyone watching, if you're anywhere in the Isha region, it's always a good evening to go down to Sandown and hopefully we'll see... Uh, Jim Crowley on that uh, nice horse uh, there in a month's time. Yeah, he uh, he had a couple. Well, he could have had a tri could have had a treble. He had a double, mm. um, and uh, he's uh, clearly uh, in good hearts. Um, and they might well have cut down on the uh, the numbers, uh, but uh, like you said, the Mostadafs, you won East today. Uh, Muta Sarvek a little bit unlucky, so it might well be uh, quality uh, over quantity for the uh, Mac Team horses on the flat uh, this season. But uh, let's see if we can uh, tie up the British jump season in a nice, neat bow at Sandown tomorrow then, starting off uh, with a novice's uh, handicap hurdle uh, kicking off the uh, the card uh, over uh, a little under two miles, albeit with that finish at Sandown. It'll certainly feel like a little bit further than that. Nappers Hill is 7-2 to two favourite. Headlaw 9-2. to two. Whiskey 11-2. Dr. Parnassus 7s. Boomborn at 7s as well. Dibble Decker at 8-1. to one. Uh, <laughs> Hasty Parisian at 12s, Alto Alto at 12s, and bigger prices the rest. Going to come to you first for this one, uh, Tom, just because uh, we, uh, you were very keen at, uh, at Aintree. Quite a few people, to be fair, I think everyone here was, uh, on, on Whiskid running a big race. Probably did a little bit too much, but um, uh, he's back out tomorrow, and uh, I wonder what you thought and whether you'd be going in again on that one. I uh, don't know. I don't know. I think he's got a good chance, but I think he's got to jump a lot better than he did at Aintree. I thought he was really guessy and really really moderate at his hurdles. It's a little bit like that. A lot of time before, I mean, he got out front, did a little bit too much, and I actually thought he did really well to finish as close as he did, given the way he went. As regards this race, I think it's really top-heavy. The ones at the bottom, I think, have got a load to find. I know they're getting lots of weight, but they've been getting beaten at Bumpton and places like that, and they're up against Nappers Hill, who's a grade two bumper winner, who was sick in the Betfair hurdle, head more, who's like improving massively hand over fist every time he runs. Whiz Kid, who was not being far in an entry race the other day, and Dr. Barnassus, who ran in the triumph hurdle, wasn't being far at all. So I thought, as the market suggests, it was really top-heavy. I personally like Dr. Barnassus. Uh, I thought he was a outside chance of winning the triumph hurdle, and he didn't run too badly. He was hot in the heels of the leaders. Two out. Uh, Finished in front of Knight Salute, who went on to win the grade one at Aintree. And I think he, he, he knocked himself. He got a cut that day. And I think they, they, they thought he could, I think he can improve on that. He had to miss Aintree as a result. But I like but I like him in this race. I think he's a really good jumper. And what I especially like, I wasn't, I was worried about the ground. Still, I saw the racing at Sandown today. Times were very slow. It's clearly been very well watered. I thought it was on the soft side of good. I think that will suit him perfectly. So... I think Napa Hill is, is the most likely winner, but I'll take him on with Dr. Parnassus at the prices, and I'm worried about his kids jump. Okay, uh, Dr. Parnassus then. Uh, obviously, we've already seen that uh, at that triumph form, uh, given a bit of a boost at Aintree. Uh, Dr. Parnassus into uh, much uh, cooler climates uh, to uh, tomorrow in this uh, handicap. Napa's Hill, top weight though, and uh, they keep backing this horse. Um, and he's uh, yeah. he wins at one to ten, two to thirteen, and four to nine. Admittedly, this is a little bit easier than the handicaps he's running. It is um, a quick turnaround though. Right, only run last Saturday. I remember watching him. He, I mean, he won that race easily, but it was nothing like this kind of race. Is this is much better. Mm -hmm. But uh, I'm keeping faith with the Whiz Kid. We were on a couple of weeks ago. I, mean, I was quite keen on him at Aintree. Um, like Tom says, his jumping is a concern, and that's always dangerous. But I feel like this race is is a little bit weaker. And uh, the fact that Twiston Davis is back on board, I thought he jumped a little bit better the last time Twiston Davis rode him at Ludlow. Uh, I'm going to keep the faith. He's only up one pound. I just, I still think he is a well handicapped horse when he puts it all together. And um, perhaps tomorrow will be the day. Okay, uh, Wizkid then uh, is an 11 to two shot. So, but Nappers Hill heading the betting here at seven to two. So, Dr. Barnas is for Tom. Uh, Robbie likes uh, Wizkid. Uh, we've uh, also got a, uh, another skeleton horse in the shape of, uh, of Boomborn, and um, I thought Dibble Decker was, uh, was pretty impressive the way it keeps finding for pressure for, for Tom Lacey and Stan Shepherd, who've had a very good season between them. So, uh, tricky little uh, opener, uh, albeit as 
uh, Tom said, a little bit top heavy in terms of uh, uh, the the betting here. Yeah, uh, one, three, four, two, seven, six. Uh, uh, the the race cards uh, in order in the betting, Simon. So no one's expecting anything to improve from the bottom of the handicap by the looks of things. No, they're not. We're offer, offering four places uh, rather than the three here. I know normally you remind me of this, but I managed to get in, get in early. Um, yeah, I was sort of looking. I mean, you're always trying to look to see if there's something of value maybe further down the bottom. Also, like Hasty Parisian, who's been improving, and um, you know he's got form at Sand. He's won at Sand down, but uh, he's actually worse off with Boomborn at the weights. And again, he's sort of had a look, look at private, privatory or private tree or whatever you call it. But it's hard to make it. I, just kept drawn to Napa's Hills form, that third to John Bond particularly, and obviously, you know, he's got he's got high class form, he's a big strong horse, he'll love this ground at Sander, albeit since you what Tom said about the times, because they 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 put his defeat at, at Sander down to softer ground, probably a lot softer than it will be tomorrow. Um I really like Dr. Parnassus, I must admit, I know you know, I spoke to Dan before the triumph, and he really thought he'd run a big race there. Actually, when you watch it back, he traveled and was there for a long way, he was just in behind horses coming to the last flight, faded a bit. They looked really strong. Juvenile form. I mean, Vauban looks fantastic. Pied Piper came back at uh, Ancient, uh, dead heated, obviously, with Knight Salute, who ran a lot better at Atrian. And he's got loads of flat form. He stays further. I think he's one over two mile three, or was second over two mile three, was he? He's got, you know, he's, uh, he's, 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 uh, you know, so that, you know, with the ground being maybe slightly slower than we thought it would be, stays well, has had that break since Cheltenham. I think, I think Dr. Finastas is really good each way bet in what, you know, is a competitive race, but uh, like, like the guys are saying, it's hard to make a case for some of those bigger price runners. Okay, so uh, not too many potentially getting involved at, at Sandown for the uh, the opener. Uh, I will take a chance with uh, Dibble Decker, uh, like I said, for the. Uh, and he might not run. Who? Dibble Decker. In depending on the uh, the condition. That's what Tom Lacey said. All yeah. oh, right. Okay. Well, I mean, it depends. Uh, I'm just, just warning you. No, no, I know. You get your money back <laughs> unless you're on anti post. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I appreciate it. It depends. It depends if he listens to uh, to the official going description or to Tom Siegel. Yeah, exactly. It? I don't know if he listens to the show, does he? But. No, I don't know. Tom... Uh, I'm sure he does. It's not too far for, it's not too far for you to go. Tom, is it to go and walk the track? Uh, I was I went past it on the train yesterday and they were, there was definitely some watering going on, quite a lot of it. They had those mm. great big things out all over the track and it was he was throwing the water on. I just Look, he did it last year and it's the right thing to do. Do you remember in the Sandown Classic trial last year? Mm. That really good race. It was they ran didn't run back fast that day either. And he, he does it to, for the jumpers, and we got to get the jumpers yeah. out. It's a jumping meeting, so we can't have rattling fast ground. And uh, it looked like it looked like perfectly decent jumping ground there today. It looked like good ground for jumpers, a little bit softer for flat holes. Okay, yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. Um, what else have we got on the on the chat? Uh, hello to to Brad Furness. Good evening to to you. Um, no one really has an opinion whatsoever uh, in this uh, in this opener. Maybe Frizzy Red uh, says I think uh, uh, Hanlon's horse can can run a big race, um, but that's coming up a little bit later on. So uh, yeah, no real opinions in the opener then. Maybe they were expecting us to talk about it about uh, ten minutes ago. To be fair, that's probably what's, <laughs> what's throwing everyone mm -hmm. off. But uh, uh, selections in the opener at, uh, at Sandow. Robbie, Whiz Kid, Whiz Kid is uh, Tom. Uh, Parnassus, Dr. Parnassus. Okay, I'll go for Dibble Decker if it runs. And Tar uh, and uh, Simon, sorry? Yeah, Dr. Parnassus for me as well. Dr. Parnassus, it is. Moving on then uh, to the uh, the Oaksy Chase uh, for the Menorah Challenge Trophy. Uh, of course, Menorah used to come back uh, over a year and uh, peak uh, in this uh, contest. Uh, but uh, no such consistency uh, in the uh, the runners this year. Mr. Fisher, 13 to 8. St. Calvados, 2 to 1. Uh, Nuts Well is 4 to 1. And Ernie River at, uh, at 9 to 2. So a real uh, mix of uh, experience and profiles here. You've got Ernie River, of course, who uh, came down at, uh, at Aintree and is uh, still in his, uh, his novice campaign. You've got uh, uh, Old Time and Nuts Well at the age of 11. And Mr. Fisher uh, and St. Calvados going up against each other uh, once again, uh, Robbie. Um, it's Good little race yeah yeah uh, fair play to um, river for running that's that's quite nice after we saw constitution hill avoiding honeysuckle next week it's quite that's quite bold of them to run him um good novice i, I think he might this might come a little too soon he does get six pound from uh, from mr fisher and not well but i think he probably will have a bit to find even though he's obviously the interesting unexposed mm -hmm. one um i think that saint calvados should probably be favorite here um Mr. Fisher has, has not really done it this season. I mean, he did he did beat Eldorado Allen at Kempton. That was a good run. But apart from that, he's been way, way off the mark. Um, he might bounce back to form. I know he's a good second in the race last year. But I feel like St. Calvados getting £6, he's rated the same. Um, he's actually more consistent than his form figures suggest because the only actual bad run he's put in 
in the last couple of years was the Ascot chase where about five horses were pulled up, mm. including Mr. Fisher. Uh, he's just, yeah, he's a good horse, so I like him. Um, Two and a half years since he won a race, though. Yeah, it's been a while, yeah. I mean, he's been very lightly raced. He's only run five times since he was second to Min at Cheltenham in 2020. Um, but yeah, I thought, he, I thought he'd be favourite. You could say the ground is a slight concern. He might prefer it a bit softer, but I think the trip's perfect. I think he should probably be favourite. I, I wouldn't want to take 30 to have Mr. Fisher, that's for sure. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, I mean, I mean, again, that's that's the thing is taking 30, 30 to eight about Mr. Fisher is uh, is normally a bit better than sort of taking nine or ten to one in the uh, the better races. He's uh, a four time Grade Two winner. Every time he wins, he has been penalised against inferior rivals, Mr. Fisher, and uh, he only found Frodon too good uh, last year. But uh, statistically speaking, Tom, if you'd uh, backed every uh, every run that Mr. Fisher had had since his debut, uh, well, you'd have gone mad by now, wouldn't you? <laughs> He's, 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 he's weird because he's got a load of ability, but I, I'm with Robbie. I don't think he's been in the, in the best of his form this year at all. Uh, now, he's probably had nothing right for him because he ran in the King George, then he obviously won at Kempton, but uh, the ground was wrong last time. The, probably the ground was wrong at, at Cheltenham again, and he doesn't really like it there, I probably I don't think, in, and gets sort of taken out of his comfort zone by Alaho. I think he might make the running here, and I think that might be the thing for him. I actually think he... I've actually think he might win Mr. Fisher, I, just simply for the reason that I don't like any of the others, really. St. Calvados, as you know, hasn't won for ages. And I, I fancied him last time in the uh, Melling Chase, or well, Melling Chase. Uh, and he really did nothing off the bridle. I thought he was going to do a lot more. Harry Cobden rode him over Hitman, and he just did nothing. And I just wondered, maybe that'll put him right for today. It could do. Or maybe he's just not the horse he was. He's clearly had loads of problems, very lightly raced. Earn River is... is I don't know about him. He's, 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 oh, I, I, I fancied him the other day and he just never jumped. He, it might have been he just never got into a rhythm. It's entry can do that to horses. Wouldn't be surprised to, to see him run well. I just don't back 11 year olds, however good they are against young, against other in grade twos. I just don't do it. It's just a policy of mine. So I get why people might fancy nuts well on bits and pieces of his form, but he's not for me. I think, I think, I, I think Mr. Fisher will win if I was there and I was. Uh, had a few pints, I might have a few a few quid on Earn River, but as I'm not, I'll probably leave it. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Uh, so if you do see uh, Tom knocking back a, a few, what, what's your what's your what's your tipple, uh, Tom? Well, I don't care, Ross. Whatever you buy me. <laughs> fair that enough. Would never happen. Kind of, uh, kind of special brew it is, my friend. Uh, but uh, okay, um, Mr. Fisher, St. Calvados, nuts well, Ernie River. What a, uh, what a strange little lineup for this one, uh, Simon. Paul Smith says Mr. Fisher usually wins when he drops down to Grade Two, but he jumps like a piano, and Sandown fence is not easy. <laughs> Uh, admittedly, he uh, he didn't stop him going very close last uh, last year. If he ran to the level that he did behind Frodon, or the level where he beat Eldorado Allen, he'd win this on the bridle. But if but some maybes with him, isn't it? It is, and this is a good example of how. Uh, can I was going over in central screen. This is a good example of how a four-runner race is quite. It can be quite compelling. You know, it's thirteen to eight the field, nine to two the outsider. Um, the one horse has been nibbled at is Saint Calvados, and you can sort of see why for all the, for the for the reasons the guys are sort of saying against. Uh, Mr. Fisher, he's, it is extraordinary. He's, he ran really poorly at Aintree last time, Mr. Fisher. I watched it again and thought, God, would you really back a horse who's falling out the back of the telly in, in a race where um, you know, there were plenty, plenty ahead of him? And yet, when you look back at some of his grade two wins, they have followed on from pretty abject performances in grade one. So we know he can do it. It's a small field, and he's, 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 he ran well last year. I can't back him, though. It would be no surprise if he wins. Uh, St. Calvados, went to all his form, seems to be soft ground form. And he hasn't really been tried much, actually, on good ground. He's just run loads of times on soft and heavy um, and interestingly enough he's actually he's, he's never won beyond two mile two even though he's run well over three miles and further his all his wins have been two miles two mile two we know him he, that he'll 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 write that at some stage i thought nuts well i must have i think as, as tom said you can make a case for him but he ran in the celebration mile last year actually ran quite well you know he was slightly outpaced not surprisingly and um, wasn't beaten you know the, the first two were, were well clear and he was in amongst the fourth fifth and sixth when he finished sixth um, he's got loads of good form, obviously, at Aintree, but I thought um, he ran pretty well at Aintree a lot last time, actually, in, in a really good bowl. You know, there was, you know, conflated, Clans over one, conflated there. Again, wasn't beaten that far. You know, making a sort of a case for him, just on the base that I don't fancy the front two. Uh, he always seems to turn up, and I think that's well at four to one looks the value. But it's, uh, you know, an earned river I'm just dismissing on the base that he doesn't look quite good enough, but he'll probably win. But a cracking little four-run race, actually, and I, I'll probably go for nuts well. 
Okay, there we go. Completely different opinions from uh, from everyone there. <laughs> um, like I said, the, yeah, the, the, I think this is my my last chance with Mr. Fisher. But I do think again, you look at his form figures; he looks inconsistent. Outside of handicap company and Grade One company, though, where he seems to get a little bit overwhelmed by the uh, the whole occasion, his form figures since he went over uh, at Timber are second, first, first, uh, second, first, 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 second, first. So um, he has his conditions. It's grade two, small fields where he's better than the rest of the horses, and that's what he gets uh, tomorrow. So um, okay. I'll be uh, I'll be going in with Mr. Fisher one more time. Robbie, you think I've got mad? Good luck to you. I mean, he does like small fields, doesn't he? He does. He does. That's quite some good, decent numbers you pull out there, actually. There you go. I just feel like given six pounds to St. Calvados, if they're off levels, I'd probably fancy Mr. Fisher. But at six pounds, that could make a couple of lengths difference, couldn't it? So. Okay, so you're going to still count those? Yeah. Okay, St. Calvados versus Mr. Fisher in the studio. Uh, Tom Siegel. Uh, I'll be in the bar, Ross, but if I'm not in the bar, I might have... It depends how long I've been in the bar. If I've been in the bar for long enough, I'll probably have a few quid on Earn River. If not, I'll probably leave it alone. OK. Com combination... Uh... Some strategy, that. <laughs> it is, yeah. Just wait till you get tipsy. Oh, yeah. Uh, we be taking uh, advice off Keels, by that sounds like. Uh, yeah. Simon, uh, Simon well, what, what's your price boost for this? Well, assuming assuming Tom has a few beers, it means we'll each of us will be backing a different horse in the four on race, doesn't <laughs> it? Because I'm nuts well. So we've basically gone for each other. So one of us is going to be right. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. It's um, yeah. How have we managed to talk about this race for this long? That's the question I want to know. Uh, <laughs> it's a good race, Simon. What's the price boost so we can get uh, get? Oh to get God, swinging? yes. Thank God, someone's asked me. Uh, the price boost here is Mr. Fisher, which was is thirteen to eight with us, but we're going to go two to one, Mr. Fisher. Uh, it's uh, between six and eight p.m. tonight. Uh, maximum twenty pounds because obviously it's uh, overpriced, so everyone can get a little piece of it. Okay, very well. I'll if they want to back it, obviously. Put my false moustache on and uh, go around <laughs> the uh, the coral shops. Then uh, moving on there for the uh, to the three o'clock at uh, at Sandown, uh, where we have uh, of course uh, a Grade One uh, contest in the shape of the uh, the celebration chase. Uh, but uh, of course uh, the the best uh, of the uh, the two mile Grade One horses are either injured or elsewhere. Uh, so uh, let's have a look at the the market for the three o'clock at Sandown. Nube Negra six to four, Granatine thirteen to eight, So Royal seven to two, Rouge Viv at eighteen to one, and Sky Pirate at twenty eight to one as well. And Tom again another uh, another lineup of uh, of horses. I'm sure that we've uh, tried to get right all season and uh, have ended up costing us a fair old packet. You've got uh, your Grenadines, your, your course specialists, the seemingly perennially unlucky Nube Negra, uh, So Royal who. Uh, nobody's told him how old he is. Uh, Rouge Viff, who might bounce back, and Sky Pirate, who is he good enough for uh, for, for this grade? It's it, plenty of question marks again. Uh, five runners. What do you uh, what do you think wins? Uh, not sure who wins, but I think it's a good race. Uh, I think if you take Energamine out of the Champion Chase, it's better than that, isn't it? With Bunamulga, Savola, and all those other ones that chased him home. I think Grenati, Nuba Negra, around Sandown, and So Royal. I think it's. As, I think it's a very decent race without the top ones. Uh, uh, I personally fancy Nuba Negra slightly, just simply because he's fresh. and he, he goes so well fresh. I remember when he beat Altior last year at Kemper. And it said, oh, Altior's gone, he's done this and that. And he, he was clearly well below form. But Nuba Negra, the way he jumps and travels, it's a sight to behold when he's in really good form. Uh, Grenatine is obviously the core specialist, but uh, I think Nuba Negra's a bit better than him, if truth be told. On, when, when they're at their very best, I think Nuba Negra's a bit better than him. I think he's probably between the two. You can never rule out So Royale because he's such a great horse. He's one of my favourites. Uh, Rouge Viff, I think, has got a bit on bit to find, as has Sky Pirate. So, boringly, I think it's between the, the, the top three. I'm, I'm in the Nuba Negra camp uh, simply because I, I love him fresh and I think he's a really, really quick, quick slick jumper who will be suited by Sandown. Okay, Nube Negra then is a uh, six to sh four shot here. Yeah, this is a horse that me and you are going to always disagree on, I think, Tom. I, um, I just don't think he is as good... As people are hoping he is. He's beat. He's won two Grade Twos. He's beat two two ten year olds who were past their best. Um, and Dan Skelton as well. Grade One events. Dan Skelton six winners from hundred and three runners at the uh, the top level. Uh, an impact value of 0.55. So any impact uh, below one isn't great, is it? It's not great. No. And he's not had a Grade One winner this season, surprisingly. No, he it's been a, it's spot. been a frustrating year for him. It's just uh, yeah, they just horses like Nube Negra who they they run in the, at the top level and they may yeah. be unlucky or things don't necessarily go to plan, but. Converting those promising novices into to genuine yeah. top class horses, it's not oh, quite happening. He's not I, had I many harsh runs top? in Grade Ones though, is he? Am I being harsh, Tom? Yeah, you are being way too harsh. He should have won a Champion Chase, shouldn't he? He was really unlucky. Mm. Uh, he's only run in a couple of Grade Ones. 
I think yeah. I think I think it'd be an arse on him. I think he's really good. Okay, fair enough. And the second grade one, he only ran in just over over a month after Cheltenham, and he needs to be fresh, as Tom's pointed out. Yeah. I really like him. I've got some numbers here. Um, <laughs> That's what I want. Breaks Robert. after 60, 63 days or more. He's one two one two one, and then compare that to short runs. He's one two three four, but. Grenatine hasn't run in 76 days, and that was a stinker at the Dublin Racing Festival. And he, I feel like he is a horse who's more suited to being on the go, on the go. And it's, it's interesting that he's, all his three top quality sandown runs came after sort of build-up races before that, whereas this is quite a, a long break. And his, his record of breaks, 69 days or longer, is 601134. So I feel <laughs> that might tilt things in Nube Negra's favour. Okay, is um, that the Grenatine hotline, is it? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, he obviously loves sand now, doesn't he? But it's, it's been a different preparation. And I just feel that Dan Scout and Pro thought, well, I mean, I could n run New Bay at Punchtown, but he's going to get found out against the likes of Chacken and, and Ergamine over there, probably. This is a much more winner race. I just feel on the balance, he's a slightly better horse than Grenatine. He'll probably win. Okay. Fair enough, slightly better horse than uh, Grenatine will probably win. Um, I, 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 I do kind of disagree. I do think the course form is going to uh, really come to the, uh, the fore for, uh, for Grenatine, but uh, you can't rule out Sir Royal as, as well. I mean, he's run, he's run two absolute blinders on his last two starts, Simon. But it is, I mean, on the one hand, it is a good race. On the other hand, mm. not a single one of these um, ran, ran at uh, Cheltenham in the Champion Chase, which um, is, uh, is a strange one, isn't it? Yeah, well, God, that's a good that's a good stat in itself. I hadn't really thought about that. You got yeah, grave one at sand over two miles, and none of them ran the championship. chase. God, this you got loads of two mile chasers. What are people going on about? Um, it's a good it's get, again. It's a good it's a good another good interesting five runner race. You know, when you're looking through it, making the case for them. So Royal uh, has only won one one grade one. And it was at Sandown in 2017, the Henry VIII chase. Again, just looking through, a horse has been sort of running the highest grade and grade ones and grade twos most of his career, running well in them, hasn't he? He's won uh, six grade twos. Um, but yeah, that's the one run. And he's he's run okay at Sandown, but he just doesn't look quite good enough. I think, I think, I mean, I'm a, I'm a Grenatine man. You know, he's, he's won a Tingle Creek, second in a Tingle Creek. Uh, he, you know, he bought, both him and Frodo ran shockers at the Dublin Festival. It was when Paul Nichols couldn't train a winner, could he? I think he had that one winner... Um, at Sandown, who's the horse who wins every, won the race three times, Paul Keeley tipped up. But apart from that, I think he, he was on a total barren run at the time. So barring that uh, Robbie Wilder stat about whether Grenatine is better uh, having had runs rather than a break, I think he, on balance, I just think he may be, that, that Sandown form might be, might, might, might sort of tip in his direction. But Numa Negra, I love, you know, Dan Scott's done brilliantly with him really. I think he's a really good horse. He was obviously unlucky not to win the champ chase and and so Royal sort of always turns up. I think one of those three should win. It'd be a surprise if, you know, I love Sky Pirate, but he's not quite good enough. So I'd probably be with uh, with uh, Grenatine, but only because you want to pin your colours to a mast. Absolutely. Well, and that, that evens things up as well. So it's two for Nube, two for Grenatine as well. Yeah. So uh, Team Nube Negra, Robbie. Mm, C. <laughs> a Spanish sire. Is I was looking at his sire. Called, there's some horse called Dink. He's only had one other horse in Britain over the last like seven years. Mental. Yeah, there you but go. Anyway, continue. <laughs> Thank you. No, I appreciate <laughs> it. And uh, and uh, and Tom, Ketal? Uh, yeah, Nube Negra for me. Para mí. Not getting involved in my Spanish show level is not coming out as mm. we speak. Dos Canos, por favor. Uh, and, uh, what does that mean? <laughs> that means two beers, please. That's what's... Uh, <laughs> that's that's the... it's Cavethos, isn't it? It's Cavethos. Cavethos. Oh, yeah. Tal yeah. Tal what are you it's, talking it's, about? It's halves, it's halves. Oh, <laughs> only halves for you. Lightweight. Well, no, you go around, you, it's, that's the Spanish, it's, it's Pinchos, isn't it? You go around, you have a little nibble, you have a small, you have a half, you move on to the next bar. Popcorn. But, let's look, I mean, this is, I mean, we are the <laughs> traditional, proper British tourists here. Um, any uh, any Spaniards watching? I apologise uh, for uh, for all this nonsense. Uh, Lo Lo Siento. What's that? Lo Siento. Sorry, in Spanish. Exactly. Look, it's all coming out now. It's all coming out now. All the uh, the Spanish uh, <laughs> Spanish fault lines uh, breeding, and uh, quite frankly, um, barely GCSE level uh, Spanish here. Simon, do you can you do the price boost entirely in Spanish? <laughs> in the no speciale, uh, I think it is. <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't know if that's right. Um, yeah, there's a Paul Nichols to win both the 225 uh, with St. Calvados or the uh, Celebration Chase with either Grenatine or Rouge Viff, of course. He trains two in the race. It's 15 to 2, the, pri the double uh, enhanced from 13 to 2. Okay. That's the speciale. There we go. And I, and I, and I fancy uh, Grenatine. Mm, 
WBM. Now, uh, Nubo Negra then six to four for for Robbie and Tom uh, Grenatine uh, for for Simon and uh, and I, and a, a written apology uh, to everyone in Spain from the show <laughs> in general. Uh, so uh, that's the celebration chase uh, tomorrow at Sendown. Uh, then, of course, we've got uh, the old Whitbread, or otherwise uh, known as the Bet365 Gold Cup tomorrow, uh, where Christian Williams uh, once again gets a chance to uh, to show that he's the the best trainer of staying handicap chases around, apart from maybe Emmett Mullins. Uh, Enrillo, 4-1. to one. Kitty's Lights at 9-2. to two. Win My Wings, 11-2. Phlegmatic is 8-1. to one. Musical Slave uh, at 8-1. Uh, to one. Streets of Doyen at 10. Uh, Hewick and Poderman at 12-1. to one. And bigger prices the rest here. Uh, our uh, social poll who wins it Kitty's Light 30% of you move, win my wings 26 and Rillo 23 uh, and 20% any other horse in this race and uh, yeah if you've just been backing Christian Williams staying chasers uh, blind in these events you'd be uh, you'd be going great you've guns, gone Robbie. too bad for yourself have you yeah you've, I'm hoping keep... you've gone into slightly more depth uh, yeah I have tried to um, I'm avoiding a Christian Williams horse this time I feel win my wings has gone up a stone for that Scottish National win I thought that was harsh enough that looked more, more like a seven, seven to ten pound job for me. I think that's going to prove her undoing. Uh, Kitty's light's interesting. I just don't really like backing horses at that kind of price for big runner handicaps. Uh, Streets of Doyen is one for me. Um, he's only one pound. He's only run off one pound higher than his Irish mark. Uh, he was a very good novice last season. He sort of comes alive this time of year. He was third in the Albert Bartlett. Uh, he was also fourth in the Sefton at Aintree. He's not quite taken off over fences, but. I mean, he can certainly draw a line for his, for his uh, last run at Cheltenham beyond long press. That was on soft ground. He's not a soft ground horse. He's a good ground horse. He looks like only on a good mark for me, 139. And uh, obviously John McConnell bagged, and those owners as well, bagged a, a big handicap a few weeks ago. He's probably been laid out for this, hasn't he? So, uh, yeah, streets are doing for me. And I think he could improve for that step up in trip. OK, streets are doing, yeah, who uh, was uh, uh, backed by everyone, I think, in the... Uh uh, the racing post offices last year in the Albert uh, Bartlett running on, and uh, yeah, they uh, they won with Marlon Mission the other day, didn't they? Up at uh, Perth, uh, Tom. So uh, yard are in good nick, but um, uh, yeah, plenty of uh, plenty of horses who've clearly been plotted up or readied and raring to go far this uh, this race this season. Your your Imrillos, maybe your Pottermans as well, uh, being uh, aimed at this. Uh, and interesting to see uh, Flematic for the uh, for the Skeletons bolt up twice and then be given six weeks off. So um, it's uh, it's a tricky little race on paper. This. Yeah, very tricky. Very tricky. You obviously got the one, two, three from last year. Enrillo was disqualified. Uh, Potterman got it when Kitty's Light probably, you know, without Pot well, Potterman did get it because of the under the rules, but he was probably the third best horse. But uh, he's got a chance again. Looked a different horse last time at Kelso with the wind up. I thought Potterman, not too much difference in the waist. In fact, he's a little bit better off in the waist with some of them. Enrillo, I think it's Harry Derham's last day at Paul Mickles' is tomorrow, so I think they're, they're planning a bit of a party afterwards, and I think Enrillo's been sort of sort of been the horse they've been getting ready for this uh, all season long. He's clearly going to go well. Love Sandow, great jumper, great traveller, really went through the race really strongly last year. He's clearly got a chance. He's like, got to jump a bit. And the only thing about him is that at, at air last time, he nearly came down at the first or the second or something. He was totally out of the race. Now, we know he we know he can jump and we know he jumps he jumps well, but he gets behind and he's got to finish and he, you know things have got to go right for Kitty's light at that sort of price to win a race like this. You know, at nine to two, he's got to hit every fence because he'll get behind and he'll be a long way back. You know, jumping the on fences for the second on fence for the second time and he'll, and he'll fly up the fly up the finish. Win the win my wings is interesting. I'm not, you know, you don't win the Scottish Nationals like that and go up seven, Robbie. I mean, she she had to go up that much. I mean, she won on the bridle. I do agree with you. She's only a small little thing. Carrying a stone more on, you know, I know Rob James is taking seven off again, but I think it'll be too much for her. Like, Matty's got to prove he stays. Musical Slave is injured. He's seven pounds well in, wasn't he? The form of his Haydock win last week might be a little bit better than people think. Uh, he beat uh, Encard, who's very good around Haydock. So I'm certainly not ruling him out. But he's a bit of a, he's been winning small field races. I just wonder whether a week on in a bigger field, he might belt a few. I like Rob. I like Robbie. Like Streets of Doyen hey. as one of my selections. I think he's going to run really well. I think he's just been laid out for the race. I think he'll love the ground. I think he'll stay really well. When he won at Galway at the start of the season over fences, he jumped fine. His last two runs ago, he ran really well against uh, the horse Gentleman de May that beat Edward Stone at Aintree. Just think everything, the, the, the sort of stars are lining in his favour. I also think, and he was a massive price a few minutes ago, and he's not anymore, Hewick is going to go well as well. He was really impressive in 
the Durham National. Now, it's only the Durham National. It wasn't at Sedgefield and it wasn't a great race, but he was giving nearly a stone and a bit to everything in the race. And he literally absolutely walloped them. He then had a load of time off because he doesn't really like soft ground, came back in the Midlands National and sort of got wiped out by a loose horse. He probably wasn't going to run very well anyway, but he, he would have needed that run. And the ground was completely wrong. He's just a good ground horse. And he's, uh, I just think he's going to go go and, go and run well. Uh, he might have a bit too much uh, in the in the weights. Might be a bit not that well handicapped. He's only a seven-year-old. And we've seen how these young horses, even today in the Perth National, National, the youngest horse in the race one. Now, he's not as young as Kitty's Light, who's still only six. But I think he's much, uh, he's got, he's much less exposed than, than Kitty's Light. So, Hewick is the one. And going back to Streets of Doyen, he beat, Playing Flooring Porter, didn't he? Uh, as well as finishing uh, third in the Albert Parlet, he beat Flooring Porter over hurdles one day last season, was it? And uh, he's just got he's just got so much back class that I think he might be the one. But I would definitely throw a few quid on Shark Hannon's horse Hewick as well. Yeah, and uh, he does look quite well handicapped on his. Uh... Admittedly, it's, it's Galway form from July last year, isn't it? So it's quite hard to uh, to work out uh, how much you uh, want to take from that kind of thing. But uh, it does look well handicapped on his uh, defeat of Blurberry there. Uh, Max uh, Daniel says, Captain Nord, what a jockey booking. Uh, of course, another uh, Christian Williams uh, trained uh, runner and Sam Twiston Davies uh, in uh, the uh, the saddle. Uh, maybe the accommodation tricast for the uh, the three uh, Williams horses. Um, other horses uh, we should probably mention. I'm going to give a shout out to Potterman, um, which you, you mentioned yeah. briefly there. Um, Tom, he, he's another one a bit like Mr. Fisher. I mean, same owners, of course, um, who looks inconsistent. But then when you actually dig into it, uh, he's uh, he's clearly got his conditions. I mean, he, he's run two shockers in the Ladbrokes Trophy, uh, but on his other four runs over staying trips, he's finished first, first, second, second. So, you know, that, that Newbury race is a, is a it's a very different time of year to when he's uh, when he really hits his form, Potter man. And apart from that, he's actually quite consistent. And I know he was awarded the race last year, but I'm struggling to see him not run a big race. No, agree with you. And the wind up, I think, was really crucial to him last time. Mm. He really travelled and jumped and did everything much better. I was really surprised because I fancied Empire Steel to win that race quite strongly. And Potterman picked him up quite easily, really. Uh, they were a long way clear of the rest. That might be a little bit underestimated, that form. This has clearly been the target all season long. I'm with you. I think he'll run really well. But there's loads. You can make a case for loads. But I think, you know, as you say, he's now 12 to 1 shot with those around him that he... That he actually got awarded the race last year. They're all much shorter, and he's not much worse off with the weights, if at all. So I can see him going, well, I get you. I get the cut of your jib there, Ross. Well, we'll uh, record that one for posterity. Uh, yeah. a, it's a first time for everything. First for everything, yeah. <laughs> um, what else have we got? Our, uh, our viewers at home, um, Vortex Fitness says, when my wings could have had an extra stone on in the Scottish National and would have still won. Uh, hopefully uh, you know about that sort of thing, Vortex Fitness, or quite the opposite. Uh, Offworld does not like Enrilo whatsoever. Um, uh, as for the the others, good luck. Kitty's light says uh, Ed. Uh, Win my wings is better than uh, Kitty's light. Uh, Hewick wins a huge handicap someday says uh, Dean Gripton. Uh, he's going in on uh, on that one. And uh, Domain de Lille, Tom Leach, who uh, uh, ran in the at the national of course and is a, a perennial uh, plodder on a little bit too late kind of horse. That's terrible uh, analysis there, but uh, you get the the uh, uh, the gist of what Domain de Lille's uh, been, uh, been doing. Admittedly, leaving it very late wasn't the worst thing to do uh, in last year's uh, renewal, Simon. It was one of those staying handicap chases that actually developed into a, an exciting finish rather than the one <laughs> kicking clear halfway around going on to win. Yeah, it was, and a dramatic finish and a story. In many ways, it's sort of been referred back several times by Christian, obviously, for poor Kitty's Light, who... Uh, has now come up in second in two big handicaps, picking up loads of prize money. I think he was saying he's won sixty thousand uh, pounds despite not winning uh, this season. Kitty's light, and um, you know, Chris Williams won too. So both in, in Coral sponsor races, the Coral Trophy at Kempton uh, when Captain Nor beat Kitty's light, and then obviously the Coral Scottish Grand National when uh, when my wings beat Kitty's light again. And um, it'd be great. Listen, I'd, I'd be thrilled to be at another one too. You know, it'd be great for Christian, but you can't. Okay, it's, it's hard to be backing his horses. At those sort of prices, uh, I thought interesting. You know, this horse is getting loads of weight. Musical Slave, I think it's got something like a forty. I don't know. Is it a twenty-four pound turnaround? Was Win My Wings after being beaten at extra just in January, finishing third? And he's fit, he's won two races since, and yet still getting lumps of weight from Win My Wings. And Fid Ups, I just thought was interesting. You know, he's also loves good ground. As former Sandown was fourth at air, staying on. Obviously, Win My Wings hacked up, but he's he was giving Win My Wings two pounds that day, and he's getting. 
a stone and you know stone tomorrow so you know i thought fidex are looking, looking for a bit of value it is a race which throws up big price winners around a puntal winning at 66 to 1 or something many years ago uh, for people older as old as me but uh there's been quite a few big price winners, so it's worth trying to find a little bit of value. So he'd be the one at a price. But I'd love to see Kitty's Light win. What's interesting, I think, is no, no one's really talking about the favourite, Enrilo. You know, mm. why Why is Enrilo so short when nobody's really making any sort of compelling case beyond the party afterwards for Harry Derham? Is, is he a bad price? He's, I mean, he's just always fairly short, isn't he? He's, again, he's another one of those horses who seems to get quite well backed. You know, he's gone off, he's gone up favourite three times in his last sort of six runs, and he very rarely goes off. He went the fourteen to one last time out at uh, Kempton, but apart from that, he's always prominent in the market. I think it's because he's got, he's clearly got a little bit of class. He's got a bit of a cruising speed, but for me, he doesn't, he doesn't jump that well. And there's once he comes off the bridle, Robbie, mm. he started to get a little bit worried about him. It's just too short. Yeah. I was I was looking at him earlier in the week. He was well, close to double figures like that. They've been way more interesting, but I can leave him, let him win at that price. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Uh, okay. Uh, selections for the the big race tomorrow, Robbie. Streets of Doyen. Streets of Doyen. It is. Uh, I will go with Potterman each way. Uh, Mr. Tom Siegel. Yeah, I'm I'm going green. I'm going Irish. I'm going Streets of Doyen and Hewick. Okay, very well. And Simon? I'm going to have a win bet on Kitty's Light because it's surely his turn and uh, each way fit ups. And the, uh, the in the nose special uh, is Christian Williams to win the Bet365 Gold Cup. With any of his three runners, it's two to one from six to four. And we're also doing an enhanced odds boost on Win My Wings, who is seven to one uh, from 11 to two, um, maximum 20 pounds for the next two hours, the next hour and a half now, which isn't it, till 8 p.m. OK, lovely stuff. A couple of Christian Williams-based angles there for the big race tomorrow then at Sandown. Uh, and uh, we've got three more to, uh, to rattle through uh, on the, uh, the, uh, the card tomorrow. Uh, the select hurdle, like I said, small but kind of select field uh, for this uh, Grade 2 contest with Scaramanga heading the, the betting here at uh, 13 to 8. McFabulous is 11 to 4. Fusel Raffles is 3 to 1 and Indefatigable. At uh, seven to two, the outsider of the uh, the bunch, uh, Scaramanga, uh, rated 150. Apparently, the uh, the best horse in this uh, this race, Tom. Um, I was a little bit surprised when I kind of looked at that. Um, one off a mark, essentially, of 141 by half a length in a handicap last time we saw him uh, over uh, over hurdles, and officially he's the the best horse in this race. Do you agree? Not sure, really. Not sure. He looked good. He looked proved again on the flat, didn't he? I'm not sure he's a total stayer at the trip in this sort of company. Uh, I had him down, you know, I know he won over two and a half here, but this is another furlong and a half. Uh, I'd be slightly about worried about him getting home against these horses. I thought Mac Fabulous might be a little bit better than him, but I thought Fusil Raffles was going to run really well. I'm a bit of a sucker for these sort of old Nicky Anderson boys coming back on this day. They tend to do well. I know people are fancying Call My Lord in a, late, in a race later on in the day, and I just thought he ran all right last time. He's back, he was running over fences, wasn't he? And he's back over hurdles. Uh, it's not a race I would have too much in, uh, too much uh, idea about, really. But I, I would be against Scaramanga at the prices, simply because I'm not sure he's going to stay. And you have to throw an indefatigable as well. I mean, she won a German festival race, didn't she? She won the Martin Pipe, uh, and she'll, she won't mind the ground. She stays well, kept fresh for this. Uh, I'd be, uh, this is wide open. I'd be uh, Of all of them, I would be against who'd be the favourite. I think... I think Fusel Raffles might be my selection, but I would also have, give an indefatigable a chance. Fusel Raffles might be the nap for me tomorrow, uh, Tom, again. I mean, I've been, I don't want to say follow him off a cliff, but you get the feeling that uh, he's, he's hated every minute of actually jumping Check. fences at speed this, uh, this season. Uh, he's three from three uh, in, uh, in good ground hurdles, including, of course, a grade one where he beat Fakir Duderi, and um, he, he's not exactly over the hill either, is he? Um, no. So I thought he'd, um, he thought he'd run a great. And, and, and the yard have done this with plenty of, uh, plenty of horses in the past, obviously Bouverdere. Uh, brain power, even Bob's Worth dropped back over hurdles, didn't he, to win at, uh, at Aintree um, in top class company. So it's kind of it's the kind of thing they, they don't mind doing. Yeah, not at all. And it was only three starts ago he won the uh, race at Weatherby, the hurdle race mm. at Weatherby, didn't he, on uh, Charlie Hall Day. He beat Kitty's Light, actually. And he beat, he beat, he beat her, uh, beat him. I keep calling Kitty's Light her, I don't know why. Uh, <laughs> he, beat, he, beat, he beat her out of him out of sight. Uh, yeah, I, I, don't, I, I think the switch back to hurdles is a good idea. I think the trip's perfect for him. I'm not sure Scaramanga will stay. I'm not that convinced by Matt Fabulous at all. So keep, everyone keeps saying how brilliant he is, and he never really quite does it. Indefatigable might be the danger. Okay, indefatigable. Although, admittedly, Paul Webber's only had one winner since 
indefatigable, wouldn't it, where there'd be an October? It's scary form, that, isn't it? Uh, it is. Oh. Uh, admittedly, he doesn't have many runners, but, um, no. but still. Uh, two votes for Fusel Raffles here, uh, Robbie. Yeah, Are you was, joining the club? I was all set to say McFabulous, but I actually changed my mind on the train up here, and I wanted to go for Fusel Raffles <laughs> There as well. we go. That's I just, my boy. Scaramanga's price looks very short to me. Mm. I feel like if Harry Cobden was dropped up on McFabulous, he'd be favourite. I've, I think the market's factoring that in a bit too much. And local Paul winning. Nichols has literally just had a winner yeah, he does at uh, Chepstow, yeah. hasn't he? Yeah. Um, Irish Hill. So you get the feeling, I mean, Napa's Hill's favourite, St Calvados's might go off favourite, Grenadine's probably going to go off favourite, and Rillo's going to go off favourite, Scaramanga's going to go off favourite. It, it looks like... <sighs> he could clean up. Yeah. Or at least uh, he certainly won't be winning the, ting the uh, celebration, though. Yeah. But, but you get the feeling punters anyway. might be putting them all uh, in. in yeah, I, I get that, yeah. But Scaramanga, sure. I couldn't believe he was the highest rated horse in this. I know he was progressive over hurdles uh, sort of last year, but first run back in a long time. Yeah, he's not for me. Uh, but fabulous. I mean, yeah, he, he would have been even for, like. I mean, he's, the record says he was third at Aintree, but Zana here <laughs> fell, didn't he? It would have been fifth, and, wouldn't it? Because that was yeah, a good guard your dreams. Over, yeah, God, God your dreams as well. So. That then I kind of thought, and then he's got the he's got the six pound penalty to contend with. He's probably not for me. So Fusel raffles by process of elimination. Um, yeah, he's not running over hurdles since the champion hurdle. Uh, I think two years ago. Uh, it's always tough for these. He was a top class juvenile, wasn't he? It's always tough for these five year olds uh, on their second season over hurdles. Uh, it, I just feel like it could bring right back to life. He's obviously going to love this good ground. This small field setup might suit. And uh, yeah, three to one. I think that's as good a bet as anyone in that lineup for me. Yeah. Yeah, 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 I don't yeah. know what I was talking about. Sorry about that. I meant the Charlie Hall, not yeah, the. Yeah, I did think that, mate. But yeah, yeah, yeah. I was. I bit my lip. There, yeah, but uh, yeah, yeah, I agree with you. I agree that he's uh, he's back over hurdles is is what he requires, and uh, I think he'll win. You're, you're with the rest of you. That's all right. The, uh, the I mean, the Charlie Hall was a. It was a long time ago, wasn't it? Let's be uh, let's be honest. <laughs> he so, barely yeah. won it either, as well. Really, Shambly yeah. won it. Yeah, he uh, yeah he was the. Um, uh, Shambly was the moral winner, but again, mm. you don't get paid out on being a moral winner, do you, Simon Clare? Three Fusel Raffles fans. No. Uh, come on, Simon. We've only only Knight Salute, I think, has been the, uh, uh, yeah. the vote from everyone, and that went in earlier on in the year, the season. Are you joining us on the Fusel Raffles uh, carriage? I am. I am. Yeah, we're going to get this. We got we got a really good record when all four panelists mm. go for exactly the same horse. I think most of them have won, you know. So. I mean, Scaramanga, the last time he ran, but if I remember talking to Jim Crowley for Jim Crowley's blog, because he rode him in the Cesarowitz. You know, that was the last time he's seen a racetrack, isn't it? And he was, I mean, he was well beaten that day. So, and yet the money's coming for him. Look, I think he's, I think, I, I get the sense he's fancy. Do you know what I mean? He's, he's, he's 13 to 8 from 15 to 8. That's happened in the last hour or so. Cobden's riding him, not, you know, not McFabulous. Obviously, that, you know, McFabulous carries the penalty. Um, so, I can see him being really well backed, but, um, indefatigable i love this mare but she she took such a bad fall last time out and i know they can come back from that it's fine but you know i i think that, that by a process of elimination and again this is another example of a small field where you can go around the houses talking about all four um so not all small fields are bad but bad races and this is one of them and I, i'm with fusel raffles so yeah let's go for it all four of us hey, nah. look at that four <laughs> votes for fusel raffles have you got a raffles pun for us oh what sorry a raffles like Cheat laugh. That like, is, that, yeah, yeah. You don't buy, t don't buy a ticket. I could have Tom Bowl, no, Tom Bowler, you'd over there. Sling. What's that? Is it, is it Singapore sling? You drink Singapore slings, or what you drink in Raffle, the Ho Ra Ho Raffles Hotel in Singapore? Do you know that? <laughs> not, not been there, mate. Uh, I mean, well, you got to go. Oh, you got to go. All right, yeah. They don't, yeah. They don't, as long as they don't speak Spanish, I think we'll be all right, um, <laughs> quite frankly. But um, OK, uh, four tickets for Fusel Raffles then, uh, I uh, reckon. Hey. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll see if we can win a, a bottle of cheap plonk. But uh, Fusel Raffles then uh, for Tom, Robbie, Simon and I. Uh, in that, uh, that select uh, uh, hurdle as uh, we uh, we move over to the uh, the novices handicap chase. We've got two races to go uh, here at, uh, at Sandown, uh, and uh, we'll just get the the selections for this last two uh, because uh, by this point, hopefully, we'll all be counting that fusel raffles cash. Uh, Beakstown is five to two favourite. Brief ambition one hundred to thirty. Up the straight seven to two. Flicko Voyou, another Nichols runner, is five to one. Present and counting fifteen to two. Jackamar eights and Nelson River at twelve to one. Beakstown, a nine-year-old novice chaser. Uh, Robert getting Buff. on, isn't he? He is getting on, but he finally got the job. Promised last a lot time, a few years ago, didn't he? As an officer, off a long time. Mm. Slow burner this season. Um, might do the job. This is one of those races where I don't really have an opinion, and I'd love to just not have a bet in it. To be honest, that's absolutely fine because we're running anyway, so that's perfectly fine. I don't know. Should we move on to someone that might have a, an angle? <laughs> 
<laughs> because I am desperate to sit this one out. It's just too difficult. No, that's absolutely fine. Please gamble responsibly, Robbie. Mm. If you don't have an opinion, don't force it. I'm not going to go near it. Yeah, fair enough. That's, uh, that's giving, teaching Paul Keeley a lesson there. Uh, Tom Siegel, um, do you have an opinion then, obviously, handicap Chase? A very, very strong one, Ross. I've been studying this race with a fuck. No, I haven't really. <laughs> uh, I, I'm going to do. I've got a. I've got a Mondamage or a Zanza horse in here for, for for you. It's it's up the straight down the bottom. Mm. I have fallen for up the straight more times than you have Zanza, Ross, and that's quite a lot. And uh, I, I, I'm just one day he's going to win a race like this, and I think it could be tomorrow. I just think that. He's been crying out for conditions like this. He likes Sandown. He's really well handicapped now. He ran well, went back again in a good race, a better race than this at Kempton last time. He stayed on into third. I just think he's gonna, he's gonna, he's gonna run well. He's, he might be a bit of a, a, a soft finisher, but he stayed on well at Kempton last time. And I think the key to him is the crown. So I hope Richard Rowe has a winner on the final day of Sandown uh, of, of the of the uh, jump season. Uh, I'm going to give a shout out to up the straight down the bottom because I just I just I just like the horse. I've always liked him, and he's never really had anything go his way, and he's always running on the, under the wrong conditions. So everything's right tomorrow. If he doesn't get it tomorrow, done tomorrow, then he never will. Okay, up the straight down. Richard Rowe, Paul Weber, uh, angle with the last two. I mean, unlikely uh, trainers, of course, uh, to uh, to uh, to win on the final day, but uh, form chance for up the straight, especially on his uh, his second to Faraday at this uh, this track. So he'd have a little bit of a squeak. Uh, and last three winners had all won at Sandown of this uh, this contest, uh, Simon. Uh, no such uh, animal in here, but I think Flicko Voyu's second uh, to, uh, to Killer Kane at this track on his penultimate start would give him uh, every chance. Uh, and he, of course, will be in with all the other Nichols horses in a multiple that could end up costing you a pretty packet. <laughs> yes, it would. We don't want that to happen. Certainly not the final day of the jump season. That'd be a tough end. But, um, I mean, I also remember Richard Rowe, Rode for Josh Gifford, didn't he, for, for, for many years? So I think it'd be lovely if he won the Josh Gifford uh, race. You know, I mean, Nick Gifford managed to win it. I think it'd be great if Rich could win it. So that'd be a great result. I thought Beakstown, he's been knocking on the door, been tipped up, fancied, and, and won really well last time at air. He was getting quite an aggressive ride. So unless that's left a mark, I think he might be, you know, a good favourite to be honest tomorrow. Brief Ambitions only beaten three horses in his last two wins and has shot up the weights. Really good placing. But whether he, you know, whether he's deserving of that uh, handicap, we'll see. But uh, I'll probably go for Beaks down. But actually, now, now you've talked about the up the straight, I quite fancy. I hope he runs well. Okay, there we go. Uh, up the straight is a, a seven to two shot uh, for this uh, novice's handicap chase. Uh, final race uh, on the the Sandown card tomorrow uh, is a five fifteen, and it's not a bad one, is it? Two and a half mile handicap hurdle here. Uh, Eighteen grand to the uh, the winner. Twelve of them run, and some really progressive types are uh, are battling it out at uh, Sandown in the uh, the finale. Uh, and uh, it's likely to be uh, 50 ball heading the the betting for the, the Gary Moore stable with Niall Houlihan uh, in the saddle, a horse who finally uh, got back to his, not quite his best last time out, but certainly got his head in front. He's 11 to 4. Press Your Luck is 9 to 2. Call Me Lord, 13 to 2. Samarive, 8. Glyn, 10. Champagne Court, 10s. Uh, Halo is Oboe, 10s. 11 to 1. And Bigger the Rest. Uh, and you were talking about horses you were following off a cliff, your Zanzas and all that kind of jazz. Uh, but trainers I follow off a cliff. Uh, uh, Tom, um, Chris Gordon will be right up there. I love a, a Chris Gordon, Tom Cannon combination tomorrow. And that Kempton form for Press Your Look, I thought was pretty smart. Yeah, I like him too, Ross. I thought he was really good. He's improving fast, isn't he? That was a really good run last time. Uh, yeah, I'm with him. 50 ball would be great for, an, for a winner on the fast day of the season for the Moors. Uh, I'd love to see 50 ball win. He was really impressive last time. And call me Lord. I mean, Paul Keeley will be sitting at home watching this saying, call me lot, shouting, call me lord from the rooftops because of his sand down form and how well handicapped he is now. I think the market's right. I'm in the press the last camp like you, Ross, but uh, I wouldn't be surprised if 50 ball, I'd love to see 50 ball really deep down for the moors. And call me lord is just so well handicapped that you've got to, you know, he's the type of horse that could run away with the race if, if he was back to anywhere near his best. But I'm with you, press your luck. Okay, very well. Press your luck, uh, which hopefully we might well be doing in the finale. Uh, Robbie, you didn't have an opinion yeah. in the uh, the penultimate. What about the last? Oh, I got something here. I've just I noticed Tom said Kiel's like call me. Lord. I've just looked at Kiel's tips, and I'm basically quite similar to mine uh, tomorrow. Yeah, call me Lord's form at Sandown, absolutely mustard. Mm -hmm. uh, one, one, two, one, three, two, three, six. The six was last time out. Uh, over three miles behind Green. He doesn't stay three miles. He's mm -hmm. behind Green Book. High class novice went on and well he finished third or fourth in the grade one novice at Aintree, I think. Uh and yeah, that's 
I mean, he's just down. To, he's just had well handicapped. Isn't he? He's off 140 now. He, he's back to back to his home turf sort of thing, and um, it just wouldn't surprise him if he had enough in the tank off that mile. I thought he'd be a little bit short on 30s too. So call me Lord. Okay, call me Lord. It is then. Who is a 30 into two shot? Uh, we did lose Simon for a second there. Let's see if he's back. I'm back. Where I'm back. Jail. Lovely stuff. And right. we're playing four, four places, not three on this. I'm hot on the old each way turns today. And uh, it's, it's, it's not a particularly sexy one, but Champagne Court, who's been running second, 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 he's a, I think he's a stone better off with Press Your Luck uh, for a bit of form uh, with him. I just thought Champagne Court, he's be, be a very solid each way chance. Probably come second again, but uh, he, he, he's capable of getting his head in front as he did earlier in the season. Okay, there we go. The finale at Sundown tomorrow then. Uh, I'll go for Press Your Luck. Tom? Yeah, I'm with Press Your Luck too, yeah. Okay, Robbie? Call me Lord. Okay, Lord Wilders. Uh, Simon? Champagne Court. Champagne Court, it is. Uh, that brings to an end the, uh, the jump season then, uh, in the UK, of course. Uh, we've got the, uh, uh, the, the joy of uh, uh, grade ones left, right and centre throughout the week at Punchestown next week. Uh, and uh, we, uh, we hope that uh, some form lines will be boosted tomorrow at Sandown. Uh, and hopefully we can find a few winners. Uh, before we go, uh, let's get the naps. Uh, of the final day of the UK jump season at Sandown. Starting off with the man to my left, Robbie Wilders. What is the nap? I just really, really think that Nube Negra is going to win the celebration chase. Yeah? yeah you just had a the nap, divine intervention there. Yeah, I'm not religious, but I think it's that light, actually. <laughs> is, I could do my blue light glasses. I don't have them. Yeah, Nube Negra. <laughs> Nube Negra it is then for, uh, for Robbie. Tom? Uh, I will go for... Dr. Parnassus in the opener for me, because okay. I was going to really annoy you and take fuse or raffles, and I thought that's mean. So I'll go mm. for Dr. Parnassus in the first. Oh, I don't know what to. You've, you've mellowed as the sun's come out over the past week, Tom. I know, I'm nice, aren't I, tonight? <laughs> uh, I will go for fuse or raffles uh, for oh, uh, the, the Henderson me. team. Uh, <laughs> Simon, you thought for a second I was going to hand you first, but no, I knew, I knew what you had up your sleeve. So uh, uh, what's, uh, okay. what's that up for you? I'll go for nuts well for a bit of value in the uh, in the four other ways. Okay, lovely stuff. That's uh, sand down done and dusted then. Uh, next week we'll be back for the guineas. Um, so uh, we'll be completely changing tack, watching back uh, replays in double quick time, that's for sure. Uh, thanks to everyone for uh, for watching uh, and getting involved on the, uh, the chat. If you haven't already, like and subscribe to the stream, of course. Thank you to Robbie, Tom and Simon. Enjoy uh, your Saturday afternoon. Enjoy Punch Us Down and we'll see you next week for a bit of Newmarket. <laughs>